Model Steam Engines Top Tip Time Part 24. This episode is about steam unions. Normally I use commercial items but sometimes I have to either modify or make my own. I'm going to start the video by showing this collection of steam unions which are elbows. And later on in the video I will show how I make thread adapters to fit one type of thread to another type of thread. On with the show. These are really nice cast elbows from an American company called PM Research. I buy mine though from a company in England who go by the name of Forest Classics. And their web address is on screen at the moment. I always have a slight problem though with these PM Research elbows from Forest Classics. I've spoken to Phil at Forest Classics about this because they do not fit quarter by 40 fittings. Phil says they are the right type, but PM Research apparently do different types of quarter by 40 fittings. Are these the tapered ones? I don't know. Either way, they do not fit my existing commercial quarter by 40 threads, so I have to re-tap them. This is a pain. I generally order these at the last minute and it's very convenient to order them from the UK. But at this very moment, I'm re-threading yet another hole in a PM Research elbow. First of all, one side, then I turn it over and do the other side. Normally I would hold these elbows in my Barco spanner, but in this episode I'm using a small vise that I have, which is not very rigid. Anyway, on to the real part of the job. On this S50, the threads on the steam chest inlet and the exhaust outlet are 3 16 by 32 threads per inch. So I need to make a couple of adapters to fit the PM Research elbows to the engine. It's quite a simple job, but I'll show it in detail for beginners. The first thing I need to do is adjust my cutting tool to the correct centre height because it's a bit low. And here's a clip of me turning the piece of brass with the cutting tool at the correct centre height. I've refocused the camera because now I'm going to use my special tailstock die holder assembly. A standard die holder fitted to an adapter that fits in the tailstock, which means I can have them all preloaded and it saves a lot of time. And as you can see, it's a really simple job to rotate the standard die holder, which is held in the correct position by the adapter in the tailstock. These die holders are very cheap, and making the adapter didn't cost much either. And I'm not doing it just from a money point of view. I find time to be a big problem. I spend over 40 hours every week making these videos. It's surprising how long it takes, not just to do the job, but to video the operation, then edit the operations, and then voice over the operations, and finally put it all up to YouTube, etc. So anything that just saves a few minutes of time is a very good thing. The next thing to do is to thread the outer part of the brass bar, which is quarter of an inch in diameter, quarter by 40 threads per inch. And for this, I'm using a commercial die holder fitted into the tailstock. You will notice that I cut the thread by hand and withdraw it under power. If you do this, though, be very careful. I don't recommend it. The next part of the job is to centre drill the end of the piece of bar, followed by fitting a twist drill, quite a small twist drill, this is a small engine, I don't need the volume of steam. If I drill this hole too big, then the entire fitting will be weak and very likely to snap off when I screw it into place on the engine. So that's the fitting completed, time to part it off. And here's a top tip when parting off. To prevent the finished part from dropping into the chip tray and never being found again, Use a small drill bit to catch the work when it parts off. Always use a very small diameter twist drill, not one the same size as the hole, otherwise the work could grab it and drill a hole in your hand. And the second tip in this sequence is, just before you finish the parting off operation, clean up the edges using a fine file. There are different ways to grind the parting tool. This one's ground pretty flat, because I often use it as a turning tool so I need it to be perfectly square on the end. It is possible to grind the parting tool at an angle so that when it parts off the component, it doesn't leave a burr on it. But this way, you get a bit of a burr, it's not a big issue. The burr can be easily removed on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper. Time now to fit it all together into the steam chest. And first of all, I'm applying some Loctite 542, which is hydraulic sealant, into one end of the cast elbow, and then I screw the thread in. But I can't screw the thread all the way in, so the best way to do it is to fit it to the steam chest and rotate the barco spanner until it's thoroughly tightened into the quarter by 40 bit. Sometimes you can be lucky, and when you make a fitting like this, it aligns perfectly on the steam chest. 
This one didn't, so I used a copper shim washer. In the other end of the elbow, I'm going to fit a commercial union like this one. Some Loctite 542 will take care of any potential leaks. Here's a union screwed fully home, and I'm sure you will agree it looks okay. I think it looks a bit better than this. Here's a still from the first video, this is how I received the engine before I started to rebuild it. Yes, I definitely think there's a slight improvement. Here's the PM Research elbow with its shim washer fitted into the steam chest. I'm not going to show the making of the next fitting in much detail because it's exactly the same principle as the first, it's just a bit longer. I was going to do it like this, but in the end I decided to use yet another of the excellent PM Research elbows. And that's it for this episode. The steam inlet connection is complete and the steam exhaust connection is also complete. As always, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.